liebe Leute, wie geht's euch? So, I haven't told you guys, but I'm going to Germany. You guys know that I'm leaving for Turkey on Sunday the 14th. So by the time I post this video, I will already be in Turkey. So ask me how it's going, or not. The middle of September, I'm flying from Turkey to Germany. Deutschland. The thing is, I haven't been to Germany since 2019. So I'm kind of scared as shit. Okay, my German has improved immensely since then. I feel like I'm on the cusp of like, I'm on the weird B2, C1 cusp right now. But the thing is, does that really matter when you're traveling? You know, because I'm not having C1 conversations on the day-to-day -day when I travel. Most of the time when I'm using my German and traveling, it's just asking how to get to this place, how to figure out how stuff works, how do I get in the freaking U-Bahn station? I don't know. Yeah, so we're gonna do a little studying. So if you wanna come along, get out your books. I got here my composition book, and I don't even have to give commentary on this. I've shown this book a thousand times. Get the book. So let's see where I left off in this book. The thing is, a while ago, I put post-its in like all the pages that I have yet to finish in this book. So let's just flip to the next available one. Ooh, this is interesting. Modal auxiliaries and double infinitives. That sounds pretty juicy, my friends. You have already encountered the modal auxiliaries dürfen, können, mögen, müssen, sollen, und wollen in the present and past tenses. This group of verbs forms a unique conjugation in the perfect and future tenses called a double infinitive. I should highlight that. Where's my highlighter? Oh god, this is already going so wrong already. I need a beverage. Okay. Ew, it's 10.30 in the morning. This is so gross. Why am I drinking... It's five o'clock somewhere, right? Okay, when the modal auxiliary is the only verb in a sentence, it forms a participle in the perfect tenses. For example, let's look at two modals, können und wollen. Er hat gekonnt, er hat gewollt. I've never seen that verb phrase structure in my life. In my German-speaking life. Not a thing, I feel like. Has, have you, if you're German, have you ever said that in your life? Er hat gekonnt oder er hat gewollt? But when another verb appears in the infinitive form in the sentence, the modal does not become a participle in the perfect tenses. Instead, it appears as an infinitive side by side with the other infinitive, thus forming a double infinitive. This structure also occurs in the future tense. Let's look at können and wollen once again. This time with another infinitive in the sentence. Notice the placement and formation of the double infinitive. Er hat ihn einfach nicht verstehen können. He simply couldn't understand him. Er wird ihn einfach nicht verstehen können. Oh, you know, it's kind of interesting because when they throw around like big words like double infinitives and modal auxiliaries, you start to like, you start to get a little bit scared, but I say stuff like that all the time. Like, ich werde das nicht verstehen können. Yeah, I've said that before. Another small group of verbs follow the double infinitive pattern. They form a double infinitive in the perfect and future tenses just like modal auxiliaries. These verbs are helfen, hören, lassen und sehen. Okay, interesting. Because one time, I think I was trying to say the sentence, my friend let me sleep on their couch, and there was lassen that was unconjugated, and I was like, why? So let's see if I can make that sentence now. Meine Freundin hat mich auf dem Sofa schlafen lassen. Does that make sense? There we go, dude. I finally understand that now. So that's a double infinitive. So there's a handful of verbs that do that outside of the modal verbs. Okay, rewrite each of the following sentences in the present and past tenses with the new subjects provided in parentheses. This is too easy. Wir können Deutsch und Spanisch. I think that's one of my favorite things about German is to say that you know a language, you just say, I can this language. Ich kann Arabisch, ich kann Portugiesisch, ich kann Luxembourgisch. Celebratory Kool-Aid. I don't even drink Kool-Aid like that, but I went to my sister-in-law's graduation party a couple weeks ago. It was like my boyfriend's little sister. And they had these for the kids and there was like a lot left over at the end of the party. So we took them home. I think I got addicted to these shits. They go to fuck. This is just like putting stuff in the past tense. Where's the double infinitive? I want to practice that. Okay, rewrite each sentence in the present perfect tense and the future. Okay, this is what I was talking about. Okay, ich kann die Prüfung nicht bestehen. Okay, ich habe die Prüfung nicht bestehen können. That's kind of a hard word, Prüfung. I always make both of them umlaut use instead of just one of them. Like, prüfing. Nobody better come for the way I hold my pen. I've heard it a billion times. You hold your pen so weird. It's like... I was right-handed when I was like growing up when I was like until I was like three and then one of my older sisters who was left-handed She convinced me that the cops were gonna come get me if I didn't switch over and I hate cops, dude I always have so I'll switch over real quick. All right. That's not too hard. Oh, okay. This one's so intense. 
The home was there sterben. Why does he have to die? Okay, this could be like a hospital drama, like Grey's Anatomy, like, why does he have to die? Or it could be mafia, like, no, 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 don't kill him, why does he gotta die? Does the Ger does Germany have a mafia? Let me know. Warum hat er sterben müssen? Müssen? Not müssen. Easy peasy, period. Okay, rewrite the infinitive phrase in the present, past, present perfect, and future tenses with the subject provided in parentheses. So, ich können, that sounds funny, ich können gut Mundharmonika sprechen. Sprechen. Mundharmonika? I was just distracted by the word Mundharmonika. If Mundharmonika is like a harmonica, then what's just harmonica? Are those different things in German? Because when we say harmonica in English, it just means like a, a mouth harmonica. It means accordion? That's, I know, it's giving me a different definition now. It's C harmonica, accordion. Okay, if you're a German native speaker, tell me how to say accordion and how to say harmonica. And I mean this harmonica in German. Mund harmonica, do you have to say mund or can you just say harmonica? Very interesting. So, ich kann gut mund harmonica spielen. I keep wanting to say sprechen. Mund harmonica is keine Sprache. Okay, in the past, ich konnte gut mund harmonica spielen. They really sind in these freaking conjugations, oh no. In the future, ich werde gut Mundharmonika spielen können. I will be able to play well the mouth harmonica. I will be able to play harmonica. Why did I just say mouth harmonica? God, German be fucking up my English, for real. All right, I'm gonna do a couple more exercises or just, you know, fill up this kind of section and I will get back to you guys with the corrections. Okay, so I'm back. And I got literally every exercise right, like to T. The one thing that pisses me the off that I cannot get down with is conjugating lassen and lesen in the preterite. Oh my god, that shit makes my blood pressure go up, dude. Okay, somebody tell me why lis is the preterite form of lassen and not lesen. Lis looks like it belongs to lesen more than it belongs to lassen. It's so stupid that the preterite form, like one of the preterite forms of lesen is las. That should belong to lassen. Does that not make sense? Like, the vowels are more similar. Like they should honestly, whatever like institute controls German, they need to have a meeting on the preterite forms of lassen and lesen because I'm gonna have a heart attack. Okay, so let's move on to Buzu. So as you can see, we got Buzu open here. This is actually my Turkish course, which I didn't even have any idea I was 20% through, uh, but we're just gonna click up here, go to German. And they, okay, thank God. They have a complete German course and they have a German for travel course. I told you guys I'm very bad at remembering like the basic travel stuff because for some reason my brain just does not compute on a basic level sometimes. So this is the perfect solution. German for travel. Okay, so it looks like this is only nine lessons long. I could do, I could smoke this entire thing in like 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes. No, honestly, like each Buzu lesson takes like three to five minutes to complete. It depends on how many exercises and what kind of exercises they have, but I love these little bite-sized lessons. I love that Buzu breaks it down into smaller topics because it can just be so overwhelming when like a language app or even a course makes you do like a marathon to review or like learn a topic. It's like, I just want a little, I just want a little taste, a little refresher, you feel me? It's actually easier to study longer when they're in like bite-sized pieces like that, I think. So let's start with Travel essentials, baby. Okay, here's a tip. Welcome to the travel course. In this unit, we'll cover the following essential phrases. I think this might be a bit too basic for, okay, wait, let's go back. Let's go to, let's go to getting around. I think, yeah, okay, thank you. In this unit, you'll learn some useful questions you can ask when you want to find out about different travel options. All right, let's do it. Ich würde gerne nach Kyoto fahren. Ich würde gerne nach Kyoto fahren. I can do that. Wie komme ich zum Flughafen? Wie komme ich zum Flughafen? I can tell you right now, you can cut off the E on komme. Just komm. Wie komme ich zum Flughafen? Let me write that one down, actually. Shit. Yeah, I, th that's a sad thing. Like, I really wouldn't know how to pull that just out of thin air when I was traveling because I just don't, I don't say that. I don't talk about these things ever. Sie können den Zug vom Hauptbahnhof nehmen. Sie können den Zug vom Hauptbahnhof nehmen. Okay, Hauptbahnhof, HBF. Period. Wie komme ich zum Flughafen? Wie komme ich zum Flughafen? Period. I love the little sound they make when you get it right. That's serotonin. The next three flashcards each contain a useful phrase and a full sentence to show the phrase in context. Make sure you listen to both. Challenge yourself, try to use each phrase in a different sentence. Wann fährt der Bus ab? Wann fährt der Bus ab? Okay, okay, see, this is the thing. 
I wouldn't know how to say ab. I would totally forget the verb abfahren. I would probably, if I was asking somebody when the next bus leaves, I would probably just say like, wann geht der Bus weg? Like, when does the bus go away? That sounds so stupid, dude. Kann ich Ihnen helfen? Kann Hallo. ich Ihnen helfen? Ja. Wie komme ich bitte zum Flughafen? Wie komme ich bitte? Sie können den Zug von der Museum Station oder der St. James Station nehmen. Nehmen. Okay. Wie lange wird das dauern? Es dauert etwa 15 Minuten. Alles klar. Und wann geht der erste Zug? Wann? Ich muss um 6 Uhr morgens am Flughafen sein. Der erste Zug fährt um 5 Uhr 9 ab. Oh, yay! Okay, so I have a one-day streak, apparently. So what I want to do now is use their community feature, which I really, really love. So it's like a way to get corrections without having to have like a language partner or a tutor or like find somebody yourself. It's super convenient. So like you write a sentence in the language you're practicing and then they give it to somebody else to correct and they give you somebody else's sentence to correct based on like the languages that you speak. Let me just show you. Okay, so let's look for writing exercises in English so I can correct somebody's English. Okay, let's look at this. Muhammad speaks German and is learning English. Actually, this could be changed person by person. If you introduce himself or herself, you might be know what type of date makes them happy. Maybe this can be a short trip in the forest. I think this person is Turkish because they used the I without a dot. So like if from person to person, if you introduce I would say if you introduce yourself, you might know, I would say you might know what type of date makes them happy. Maybe this can be a short trip in the forest. In the forest? That sounds kind of weird. I would say to the woods, maybe? Also, I, I wish I could write, or no, you can leave a comment. You can also leave a comment. So in English, we don't capitalize improper nouns. So like forest. I'll give him four stars. It was just like a couple of prepositional things were kind of weird and he used the wrong word just once, so pretty good. So now I'm gonna write my own thing. Let's do, if you go to conversation, you can practice what you've learned and get corrected by native speakers. I will write about this picture because I love cats. Ich habe eine Katze. I have just one. Sie ist sehr fett wie die Katze. In bed. She's just as fat as the cat in the picture. Send a community, let's see what people have to say about my fat cat. I feel pretty confident about that sentence, but maybe, who knows, you know? It's so cool that you can like find real native speakers in the Vuzu community that easy because I get the question all the time, like Elise, how do I find a language partner? How do I find somebody to correct my work? And it's just like, well, there you go, man. There are so many other features about Boozoo that I love, like the personalized study plan. They like give you reminders about when to study and how long. Uh, they also have like live lessons if you want to take group classes they have that it's dope so check out boozoo i'm gonna leave some links below for you guys you can start learning entirely for free and even do like a boozoo premium free trial for seven days to see if you like the premium version i got you will not disappoint promise okay i just had to abandon the kitchen table can you believe that's my like home office i just moved in with my boyfriend and i don't have a desk yet because our office is a mess with all of my stuff hee <laughs> hee i mean my clothes so for now the damn kitchen is my home office anyways we have migrated to this here living room because i want to listen to a podcast i'm kind of bougie so i listen to pot oh hey mimsy do you like listening to podcasts on the tv I don't know, I just don't like wearing headphones, so I prefer it this way. If you want to follow me on Spotify, it's Elise.DeVega. I have some pretty good playlists on there, I'm not gonna lie. So, let's just go to search. I don't know why Easy German is not in my thing anymore. What do you want, girl? <laughs> let's just put Easy and see if it comes up. There she goes. Oh my god, what the hell is that? What is that? Oh my god, wait, what is this one about? Sehr geehrter Herr Mr. Wissen to go. I watched Mr. Vincent go. Is, are they are they roasting his ass? I guess we gotta find out. Wir interviewen jetzt gleich einen meiner Lieblings YouTuber. It's an interview. Okay, I'm gonna pause it real quick, listen to it, and I'm probably just gonna write down some vocab words. We will be back in a few. So as you can see, I am almost done with this episode, and I literally have four words or expressions written down. Oh, this is supposed to be demon chide. I just heard it in the. I heard it in the genitive context, so I just wrote der. Die Ansprache hinter den Kulissen sich ernst nehmen und die Menschheit. The reason that I have so few words after listening for so long is that I only write down vocab that I know that I will need at some point. 
or that I find most relevant for myself. So it, it could very well be that the other phrases, yes, I will need them at some point, but I am relatively minimalist with the vocab that I write down. I try not to like overflow my brain with so many words and literally every word that I don't know. Like there's, there's no point in doing that because you're not gonna remember it all, you know? So you know what? I am completely good. I feel like I got a lot out of this episode with the listening practice and I'm taking four words and phrases with me. So we're good on that, aren't we Mimsy? This bitch is asleep. She don't even know what we're talking about. Well, ich danke euch Leute. Thank you so much for watching this video. Wish me luck in Germany. I am kind of terrified. I feel like I already know the country so well, even though I've literally only been to one city. And this is only my second time in the country. Just from like the sheer exposure to all the stuff that I've heard and watched while learning German, I feel like it's gonna be a breeze, I hope. Oh my gosh, so tired. What is that face? So you know the drill, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, even hit that little bell if you like the video, cause then you'll get notified when I post more videos. See how that works? And bis zum nächsten Mal, see you on the flip.